Hi everyone, Ethan is here. Thank you for joining us today for another video of the 3D Printing Expert. Today we are going to dive in into the RC project and explore some of the electronics and the building. So let's get started. So today I'm here with Gal. Hey everyone. Alright, so today we're going to dive into the electronics part of the RC car. Because I've realized that there's lots of information missing online and we're trying to fill in some of the gap. But before that, I'd like to talk about some of the parts. Most of these parts were printed in ABS. I thought it would be the right decision because it will have the, the flexible give for an RC car so the parts won't break. But one of the parts that didn't turn out that well is the rear spoiler. The reason being that it has some extreme overhangs. So I uploaded the file to Princess and retried it in PLA and it came out just amazing. So let's go to the computer and show you how it works. Okay, so I got into Princess website, which I will put the link in the description. We will upload the rear wing model that didn't print properly with ABS. Here we can see the model preview. Let's choose the printer that we are going to use. In our case, it's the Ultimaker 2. Now the best printing orientation and parameters going to be set automatically using Princess algorithm. When the optimization process is done, you will be able to get a ready to print file. Let's send it to the printer and see the results. Okay, Galga, I want to ask you, like, how much this project costs in terms of filaments? How I know that there is a blend of filaments. I know that you use nylon, ABS, and uh, also flexible filament, the TPU for the tires, so how much does it cost you? Well, actually, it's not that expensive. I think that all together, I've made the, around the $20 mark, including the nylon and the, and the TPU. It's pretty lightweight. Of course, you want to make it as light as possible, you know, stay on the low infill. I think most of these parts are printed around 10% uh, infill. And the uh, worst case, if you break them, you can always print another one out. So Gal, I want to ask you if someone wants to start this project. I know the electronics is what will cost you the most, right? Yeah, the electronics were the most expensive part of this project. And uh, of course, the good thing about them is you could always use them for any RC car. If you have some RC car laying around home, you can take out the parts and use that instead. And uh, it's pretty generic. Generic motor, generic receiver, the servo. They fit pretty much all the RC cars. So you don't have to go out and buy them. Okay, so maybe you will show us what kind of electronics do we have. Okay, so here we have a two cell LiPo battery. I think you can also install a three cell, but this is, gives me enough power and enough strength to do anything with the RC car. For beginners, it's more than enough. The second part we have here is the servo. It's already sitting in its mount. As you can see, I just took it out of the car assembled. Now because I took the cheap side, I just took a paper clip and used it as the connecting rod between the servo and the, and the steering system. Okay, this is our third part, it's the speed controller. It connects between the battery and the motor, and also connects to the receiver. Right, so here we have our fourth part, the receiver. It has up to three channels, so that means we can connect, control the motor, the servo, and we can add a third uh, surprise that we might do in future videos. Okay, and here's our fifth part, which is actually the motor. And the only trick here is to tighten the motor in place in a way that the gears are touching strongly enough so they won't tear off their gears, but not too hard so that they'll deform and dislocate. All right, so the last part, I think is the coolest one, and the most expensive one is the remote, right? Well, yeah, well, the remote, as I said, it comes with the receiver. But this is a great RC remote, it's what's recommended on, uh, on Daniel Ray's website. And um, you can use it for any project afterwards, if you want to change, you want to mod stuff, you want to do any remote control project. It's really a simple remote and you could change lots of settings, control the acceleration, change around the channels. It's a great product. Alright, so let's uh, start from the assembling of the electronics. Alright, let's get started. Alright, so now we're going to start with the servo. As you could see, I already have the mount pre-installed. I also went on the cheap route here and I took a regular paper clip and bended it to right shape. Okay, so now what we do is we just 
First I stick it into its slot. Okay, so we got it right into place. All right, so we flipped it over. Now we just stick them in. All right, be careful not to tighten it too hard because don't forget these, these screws are actually screwed into plastic. There's no nut on the other side, so we don't want to make it, we don't want to break it apart. So the first thing I want to install is the battery. I already have some double-sided tape on the back. So I'm just going to place it in the middle because it's the heaviest component. And we want to keep the mass in the middle. All right, so now we're going to install the speed controller. So I'm just going to put it on the side by the battery. And we need to connect the bullet connectors. Make sure that you press the nut all the way in. Just hide them away. Last part is the receiver. Okay, so also for the receiver, I'm gonna add some double-sided tape so it won't fly around inside. Before I stick it in, I'm gonna con connect the wiring. So the only thing you have to be careful is the orientation and the placement. I usually start with the wiring from the speed controller. Okay, we put this in channel two. Just make sure that the white cable is closest to the antenna. And then I take the servo. Here you take the orange cable and make that one closest to antenna. Okay, now just stick it somewhere where it won't bother. So always make sure that you turn on your remote before you connect the power to the car, especially if you have wheels on it, because if there's any kind of error, it could fly away or drive away. And uh, my receiver came prepared to the remote because I bought them together, but there's a procedure for pairing that we might do in a later video. So, of course, the remote's on. Turn on the power. We see the steering wheel move and we hear the beeps. Let's give it a test. Steering. And let's put out the motor. It looks like it could drive even without wheels. Okay, so let's just disconnect. All right. So now we're going to continue with the build. Cool. All right, so it came out nice. I like the new colors. I think we should change all the parts to colorful parts. That's it. Thank you everyone for joining this video. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel so you never miss a video from the 3D printing experts. Don't forget to like, share, and leave a comment which kind of topics you would like us to cover. Thank you and see you next time. Bye.